We've been monitoring the news conference taking place in Clackamas, Oregon, and that picture is the suspect who took his own life after killing two people at the shopping center in Clackamas outside Portland. We are going to keep an eye on this for you, and if we get any more pertinent information about the suspect, Tyler Roberts, we will again break in to bring you an update as that news conference continues. Now, in this morning's Staying Healthy report, flu season turns deadly here in Colorado. A Pueblo woman is now the first reported death in the state. Health officials say the middle-aged middle -aged woman also was the first in the state to be hospitalized this flu season. At this point, more than 100 people have been hospitalized for the flu, and that's nearly double the number just two weeks ago. And as we get together with our family members for the holidays, it's an opportunity to become closer and show our love for one another. As our parents and other relatives age, we also have the opportunity to share the gift of health. And that's why we have Dr. Diane McAllister, who joins us every week to fill us on on handy easy tips that we can do to live healthier lives. She is the chief medical officer at Centura's Porter Adventist Hospital, and she's here to give us some ideas on the issues that we should be addressing and start conversations that are sometimes awkward with our, with our family members and get over those barriers, but get, get the information out there. Let's all talk about what we need to know about our parents' health. Absolutely, and we need to start having those conversations before there's a real need for them, where there's an acute medical illness. So they are awkward. It is hard to talk about things like illness and death, but the earlier we start having them, the more comfortable they are. So get together, talk about living wills, power of attorney. And I really encourage the parents to initiate these conversations. It's hard for the children to initiate them with us as their parents. So we should be initiating, telling them what our wishes are. It's a gift to yourself and to your children. In addition, don't forget to have a list of your doctors and their phone numbers, your allergies, what medications you're on, and what surgeries and uh, medical illnesses you have written down for your children because in an emergency, they're gonna be speaking for you. Right, it sounds like such a downer to be talking about these are my wishes. You know, you don't wanna do it necessarily around the dinner table, but, but there are other ways to initiate these conversations. Any suggestions? I mean, we all can't invite Diane McAllister over to help us <laughs> broach these subjects. Well, I think the way to approach it, it again, it's, it's helpful to the children if the parents will initiate mm -hmm. it, but just to sit down and say, you know, I love you and respect you so much that I want to make sure that if you can't speak for yourself, I'm able to do exactly what you would want done. When you approach it in that way, it's a gift. And you have some other suggestions for gifts of staying healthy. I do. Um, the first is, again, the flu season's here. Before you go visit your elderly relatives, go and get a flu shot. And then when you visit them, make sure that they've had their flu shot and a pneumovax. In addition, you can think about gifts that will actually help them stay healthy. So puzzles, books, things that improve their mem memory. Ah, mind gifts. Right. Things and to keep the mind sharp. Exactly. And then think about uh, giving them weights, uh, light weights or ankle weights, a book of um, balance, um, exercises because maintaining our balance and our strength is important to not falling. Then you can also look at them and, um, and give them safety around their house. So help them remove throw rugs, put up grab bars, safety proof their house for them. Give them a coupon book of um, chores. So you don't want your elderly parents up on ladders cleaning out the gutters, do it for them. Send your teenagers over to do it for them. Um, and then finally, you know, the best gift of all, especially as we get older, is to visits. So visit them regularly. There's really good evidence that social interaction helps us live longer. Those are all excellent ideas, Diane. And one of the things you can do when you're visiting is just be really observant to watch how they're walking and so on. Absolutely, and especially those of us who live a long way away from our elderly relatives. When you go there, look at how they're dressed. Um, are they taking care of themselves? Are they losing weight? Those could be signs that they can't keep up with all the household chores and may need some help. Observe how steady they are, because if they're getting unsteady, it could be their medications. It could be a vitamin deficiency. They may need to be evaluated for um, uh, strokes or other things. And then, uh, Take a look at their house and make sure it's safe. Make sure there's not you know, electrical cords hanging out, that throw rugs are gone. And um, finally, look at, uh, observe their memory. Now, any of us over 50 know that we start 
losing our glasses, losing our keys. That's absolutely normal. Our brains are busy. But if they're disoriented, if they don't know where they are, if they can't find their way to the local grocery store, that's a sign that you really need to help them get in and get an evaluation to make sure their memory's working right. And again, their medications can cause problems like that. All right. Well, thank you so much for getting us started. This is a difficult subject for a lot of people. I actually have gone through this with, with my own mother. So. Yes. I really appreciate the help that you are helping to convey to our viewers. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Diane. You're welcome. And we're going to be posting today's segment on the denverchannel.com. Just scroll down the home page until you find that red TV button, and I'll also post it on my Facebook page. Thank you, Dr. Diane.